Hello, and welcome to the Limo Profit Show. I'm your host, Ed Stapleton, Jr. Today's guest is Martin Ramju, who is the editor of LCT Magazine. Martin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ed. Good to be here, and congratulations on your uh, new company and your new show. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. So let's get right into it. Let's talk industry trends. With the town car retiring, it's kind of a big shakeup in the industry. Where do you see operators moving? What vehicle choices are they leaning towards? Let's, let's just talk vehicle choice and the future of the chauffeured vehicle in general. Okay. Well, that's obviously uh, topic A. It was that at our show, and it will be for a while going forward. Uh, right now, there's no clear front runner. Uh, Operators have more choices than ever before, but in looking at the sales figures from the various OEMs and the coach builders, uh, there is no vehicle that's clearly emerging yet as the predominant one. We're seeing a horse race between uh, Chrysler and Cadillac and Lincoln, and it's something that's just going to take some time to uh, play out. Lincoln, of course, seems to have an advantage in that they uh, they now have a sedan, the MKS, along with their official town car, the MKT, and the MKZ Hybrid. So they have um, the most offerings out there when it comes to a uh, corporate livery vehicle. But uh, as I said, we've got more players than ever before, and... Uh, I certainly am not going to uh, go out there on a limb and, and predict what the sales order is going to be going forward. Uh, so no inside scoop to that? No, nothing has really come forward. Uh, okay, the, okay. The, the numbers, surprisingly, uh, if, if you look at them, even with the Toyota Avalon and the 300 and the XTS, it's still hard to guess. Gotcha. It was a pretty big move by Terry when they recently announced that the Cadillac was going to be their vehicle of choice. Do you see a big major operator like that adopting the Cadillac, and then you look at Davel, who already has the Cadillac as their main vehicle? Do you see that having a trickle-down effect into our industry, into the smaller operators that feed off of that inbound affiliate work? Yes. Uh, Whenever a large company or chauffeur transportation network adopts a benchmark vehicle, the affiliates have to follow suit to a certain extent. Whether it will be the XTS or the MKS or the MKT, uh, once again, you you seem to have large companies lining up with both vehicles. So we might see um, a situation where operators who are um, the affiliates of the major companies will simply have to have both vehicles in their fleets. It's kind of an inexact science when you... um, consider the, the, the choices and what the previous preferences were. This was always a very hierarchical industry with, with Lincoln, Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz as one, two, three. But with major companies making highly individual decisions based on their projections and their client tastes, uh, it's, it's really hard to see if, if there's going to be one clear benchmark vehicle. Gotcha. Okay. So let's talk about Uber. Uber has skyrocketed to fame in the last year or so, and you know, little operators, I know a bunch of them are making a living just on Uber rides alone. Larger operators are hating Uber. They, in the Boston market, uh, filed a large lawsuit against them. It almost seems like, almost like a person crossing like a union picket line for a small operator to go work for them. Such a love-hate relationship going on within the industry right now. Is Uber really a threat? Uber's only a threat to the extent that you want to see it as a threat. Uh, it's not going to go away. Uh, trying to make app-based transportation technology, trying to put that in the bag is, is like trying to control the Internet. It's, it's just not going to happen, and the industry needs to adapt. Um, the only place where I think constructive pressure can be brought to bear is uh, in, in the area of insurance and compliance and making sure that those people who are driving for Uber are following the exact same rules as um, limousine operators and whatever level of of ground transportation we're talking about. Uh, One of the big topics that we're going to have at the Leadership Summit is is, uh, going to address this directly, which is how does the industry collectively accept the fact that we live in an Uber world, and how does the limousine industry uh, meet that competition adapt the technology, and still maintain its, its high-quality service standards. It can be done, but it's going to take a lot of uh, brain power and a lot of collaboration. So the only two things we can say for certainty is that Uber will not go away. It's one of these paradigm-shifting technologies. But on the other hand, it makes no sense for 
seven, 8,000 limousine operators across the country to each have their own particular branded app. Um, that's, that's not going to be the solution either. So at some level, um, operators uh, will organically need to start cooperating with each other and uh, looking at ways to make fleet vehicles readily available to meet this type of demand. And they're going to be people much smarter than me <laughs> trying to figure this out and, and set the new standard. But the one thing the industry should hold very firm on is that whoever is pulling up to the curb as a result of, of an Uber call uh, is insured. Uh, the, the vehicle uh, meets all licensing and safety requirements and that we at the very least have a level playing field. Got it. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about the Leadership Summit. For those that don't know, can you kind of talk about what that is and who it's applicable for? My dad's been in the past. He loved it. He had a great time at the event. But for the listeners at home that don't know what the Leadership Summit is, could you please explain it? Well, the Leadership Summit is more, it's kind of half conference that focuses on big ideas and big things, and it's half vacation. It's the emphasis is a um, more relaxed retreat style setting where you can network, have a good time, and just uh, unlike a trade show, you can just sit back, take a deep breath, and think, and really get to know people and start discussing those those topics that do require some thought. Uh, Uber, of course, will be um, one of the number one uh, topics that we're going to have as part of a three hour big picture. Uh, session on Monday, June the 10th, and we're going to have uh, three leading tech executives that will be part of this, excuse me, four. Uh, that would be Doug Anderson, who's the uh, Chief Product Officer of Limos.com, uh, Tom DePasquale, who's the co-founder and CEO of Outtask, which is a subsidiary of Concur Technologies, and then Amy Harris, who's an executive with Deem Ground, uh, which does a lot of corporate managed travel. And then Bill Faith, the president of Inbound Marketing Agents. And they will take slightly different viewpoints on this issue, and they'll present different alternatives. And, and out of that, we hope to uh, spur uh, an industry discussion on the, the way forward with, with Uber. And then mixed in with that, there'll, there'll be a luncheons and a dinner. Uh, there'll be a nightclub party, some deep sea fishing, tennis. Uh, it's being held at the Ritz Carlton in South Beach, which we have learned over time is the preferred location for this because it's close to uh, all the attractions in Miami Beach and there's a wonderful pool to be hanging out in. So it's uh, out of all the LCT events and trade shows that I've been to, I certainly like this one the best. And it's uh, it's definitely well worth the cost and well worth the experience. That's great. And another thing I recently saw on your Facebook fan page was the creation of the LCT Fast 40 group. What exactly is that? This is a um, kind of a, a seed group or a um, experimental group that is very loosely based on uh, new generations of operators who are who are coming up through the industry. Uh, operators roughly under the age of 40, and it's an attempt to um, kind of merge a lot of the uh, changes that we're seeing in the industry and the new technologies that are emerging with the generation that has fully absorbed uh, and understood these technologies and get them out there thinking, how do we envision running our companies 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? In what ways are the members of our generation who are clients uh, are they changing their business travel tastes and practices and preferences? And how do we stay out front? So the, the Fast 40 group is, is kind of a semi-virtual uh, think tank that we're going to keep connected uh, through, through the Internet and through conference calls, uh, who can essentially um, define the issues going forward, uh, present some practical solutions, and uh, set the stage to take the lead. Uh, it's open to anyone in the industry. We, we are not literally going to check your, your birth certificate to see if you're less, less than 40 years old, 
but it, it's a way of recognizing the fact that uh, there are new younger operators coming into this industry. It was readily apparent at the international LCT show uh, this past February. We have a lot of new faces, and I think there are a lot of ideas and energies out there to be harnessed, and the uh, Fast 40 is the way to do it. And right now we have a Facebook page that's dedicated to the LCT Fast 40. We're putting articles and links out there every day that would be of interest to this demographic. And I certainly encourage everyone out there to hit like and to get in on the conversation. That's great. And speaking of new faces, you guys just recently added two new members to the staff, Dennis Wilson, and I believe today was Tim Crowley. Is that correct? That's right. Tim just joined us yesterday. Uh, he's not exactly a newbie. He's uh, been working for the last six, seven years at Nails Magazine, which actually is one of the top magazines here at Bobbitt Business Media. They're known for their progressive design. They have um, they have the most uh, page views and unique visitors uh, on their website out of any in the company. And in terms of of magazines and B two B content, they've they're truly at the uh, at the cutting edge and. Tim has um, oriented himself to magazines through Nails, uh, where he started out as, as an assistant editor and uh, became a senior editor. And he simply wanted to, to do something different and had been looking at the limo world for a while. So he has a lot of interest. And uh, I already forewarned him it's going to be a very short learning curve because there's a, there's a lot happening. And he needs to get up to speed on this. And he will be at the summit. He will be helping me and Dennis Wilson lead the uh, the Fast 40, the panel discussions that we're going to be having. And he'll also be at the GCLA's uh, membership meeting in Long Beach on uh, May 14th. Uh, Dennis has been with us since February. He's our, our first East Coast editor in many years, and he's hyper-focused on the association's and all the industry networks and groups that are present on the East Coast. Uh, I kind of like to think of the limousine industry as having two hubs, and that would be the New York, New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia, uh, Urban Strip, all the way up to Boston, and then you've got L.A., Southern California. And if you're going to have a trade magazine, you might as well have it based in one place or the other, but then you need people in, in the other area. And Dennis uh, uh, fulfills that that need in terms of coverage, and uh, he's going to be at NLA Day on the Hill, May 22nd. And we're really glad that we have an experienced full team. This is the first time in five years that we've had that. And just in case anybody is is wondering, I, I can't mention Dennis and uh, Tim without mentioning Michael Campos, who absolutely. Will will stay involved with um, LCT. He um, did a really good job here, but he, uh, like a lot of um, young business-minded people, he got the entrepreneurial bug and just really was chomping at the bit to go out on his own and pursue some things. But he's going to continue writing a social media column for us. He'll be uh, interacting with people in the industry, and we hope to bring him to uh, future events. So, Nice. Uh, what is Michael getting into, do you know? He's pursuing some uh, digital media, social media, um, consulting, and, and um, setup work for different clients. And he's um, really gotten self-educated in the social media realm. Yeah, absolutely. He's been putting out a ton of content for you guys in the digital marketing and inbound marketing space. It's been really exciting to see his content. So right. I wish him the best, best of luck. Yeah, he's he's the perfect social media gun for hire. Uh, companies increasingly need social media editors, and if you want to contract that out to somebody who's really flexible and knows what he's doing, he's the guy for that. Excellent. Okay. Let's talk about the LCT East Coast show. That's pretty exciting to have you guys back on the East Coast. Let's talk about that for a second. What made you come back? Where is the show being held? What can we expect? Well, the LCT East show is a... Um, it's kind of, uh, I like to call it the version 2.0. I think we've kind of used that, that moniker quite a bit. But it's, it's the second uh, generation of, of the original LCT show that started in 1984 in Atlantic City. And it kind of came about almost by coincidence and at the last minute. Um, we were kind of surprised in early November when Limousine Digest announced it was leaving Atlantic City and going to Philadelphia. Uh, as is 
the case in a competitive business environment, when you see a vacuum, you go fill it, especially if there's an opportunity. So we set up the LCT East show for Caesars and the Atlantic City Convention Center and announced that in early November. And we wanted to be sure that uh, given the level of uncertainty that was going on in the industry at the time, that operators were served with a global international show in Las Vegas, but that there was also uh, an accessible national trade show on the East Coast. And anyone who knows the East Coast will understand that Atlantic City, both from a cost standpoint, accessibility standpoint, and in terms of its attractions and ambiance, is the second best place to, to Vegas to, to have a trade show for the limousine industry. So we're kind of using this also as a laboratory to do very new and exciting and progressive things in terms of the format. Uh, there will be think tanks and round tables in addition to the seminars, uh, and also there'll, there'll be a uh, trade show floor, which uh, will be a close second to the one that we have in Vegas. So I strongly encourage people to come and, and check it out. It's, uh, it's kind of a first-time thing, uh, even though we've done it before. Uh, so we'll definitely be interested to, in hearing uh, what people have to say about it. Nice. That's exciting. Uh, yeah. I definitely will be there. So. What are the trends you see in the industry? What else can we talk about? What else is going on in LCT? Well, we have our uh, fact book coming out uh, in just a few weeks. We're going to get the um, get the office copies at any time. We always wait with bated breath because if there's one publication that has the most potential for errors, it's the one that has the most numbers and the most lists in it. So hopefully we, we nailed it this time and, and got everything right. But the, uh, the, the fact book will, will have some enlightening new stats and information, and we're always looking at ways to um, present numbers in, in ways that uh, are more realistic of how operators view their businesses and how they do business. Uh, we want to get deeper into the revenues and the costs of, of running a limo company. Uh, we have more of the statistics that are segmented based on fleet size so that if if you're a 20 vehicle company, you can compare yourself to other 20 vehicle companies and, and you can see what the numbers are for those that are 1 to 10 or, or 51 or more vehicles. And just overall with LCT, it's um, in some respects, it's a back to normal year. 12 issues, full staff, uh, three events. Um, I, I would like to add, we, we did have an LCT Eastern Conference uh, in New England for five years in the last decade, uh, which we ended because of the recession. Uh, so ha having the Atlantic City show, the summit, the ILCT show, 12 issues, three editors, it's definitely the best year we're having since I started over five years ago. That's great. Uh, I'm glad to hear things are going in the right direction. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's happening with other companies too. I think there's, there's um, not a complete sigh of relief, but there's easier breathing now that the, the worst of the recession is behind everyone. And there are a lot of challenges and, and interesting things happening that require more attention and, and that require more effort. So whenever that happens, you need more people. And that's, that's always a good thing. So one final question. What would be the most exciting thing that's happening in the industry for you right now? What do you like the most? What are you most looking forward to? What's really got you, you know, jazzed up? I would say it's this competitive vehicle market. That's the number one thing that we're writing about on our website and to a certain extent in the magazine. Uh, if you look at what generates the most traffic, it's all those little articles we do week to week on uh, people taking deliveries of new vehicles, explaining why they made a particular fleet decision. It's very interesting to see when you, when you have a lot of uncertainty in the vehicle market and you have a... Um, kind of a race going on among all the different manufacturers and to uh, be able to talk to operators and, and hear them be enthusiastic about a particular vehicle and explain why why they got it and what appeals to them about it um, I, f I find that really interesting and of course the the whole numbers game is to is to see who's who's ahead and who's selling more um, that's interesting as well so that's going to be occupying us for a while <laughs> Well, this has been great, Martin. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you, and uh, 
we'll be seeing you out there, and uh, you'll have to let me know how my ratings compare to Arthur, because he's kind of the gold standard in generating traffic. So I, <laughs> I, <laughs> actually, I, you know what? I, think, I think Barry Gross is actually beating out Arthur right now, so Arthur, challenge has been issued. you gotta, okay. you got you to gotta outrank Barry. All right. Well, I'm. <laughs> I don't think I'm quite in their league, but if if I can get anywhere within within the realm, um, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate All right. your time. Take care. Take care. Bye bye.